Morning. Welcome to the first day, our first bite of the elephant as it were, as we leave the bay here in the Sierras off the historic 49. And uh, yeah, gonna upgrade some LTE antennas, set up satellite communications, and uh, start taking those elephant bites. But first, coffee. Ah, uh, my happy place, coffee. Even though I'm leaving the comfort of Point Richmond, I bring the caffeine comfort where I go. If you're in the Bay Area looking for a charming Main Street USA vibe, go to Point Richmond. Or if you're a wild turkey, you might already live there. The journey forged eastward along the Sierra Nevadas through the Golden Chain Highway so famously named after the 49ers coming to California to strike it rich. Crossing the Merced River, it wasn't long before I reached Mount Whitney, the tallest peak in the lower 48. But more on that later. So this is a Wee Boost by Wilson. The idea is that big antennas go on the outside of the van, little antenna goes on the inside of the van, this thing sits in the middle, otherwise zoom and enhance. The question is, is it worth $500 and a 20 watt draw on our battery system? Alternatively, we can buy just an inexpensive LTE antenna like the one from WeBoost, which is tuned to those frequencies, and then wire them directly into the modem. No booster, no inside antenna, just copper and meters divided by the speed of light. The trick to this is getting the antenna up and away from the big metal box that is the van. This LTE modem, like most, has an optional external antenna port, typically U.FL, which just means you're going to need a pigtail. With that, you've got the benefits of high gain antennas out of away from the metal cage and the convenience of a modem inside out and away from the weather. No repeating necessary, which really only increases latency and let's face it, the thing is a power hog. So that's the gist. I can say with confidence, having traveled with Glitch, myself having the WeBoost package in its off the shelf configuration and him with just the antenna mod, that it absolutely outperforms the typical setup just the antennas alone. I will say there have been a few special circumstances where it has been nice to have the WeBoost, but again, since you can get 90%, if not better, of the results for a fraction of the price and without the power draw, I think it's an awesome addition to your arsenal no matter what. And if you're interested in the full story on this, as well as you know the details on hacking the modem, I will link to Glitch's episode, as well as to his affiliate links if you want to purchase some uh, antennas yourself. There's a variety of them, not just WeBoost. There's uh, a plenty of inexpensive options and also some really cool ones like Yagi's if you want to get directional and have some fun with that. So that's that. And I can actually say now, having been out here and working with this, it has been a dramatic improvement of what would have otherwise been no service whatsoever. And there's nothing like a real world test to see that, yeah, this indeed works. And just like that, it is such a buttery smooth connection. I've been working all day with this on Hangouts with developers and now about a, maybe a new show team. I don't know, hey, check it out. It's Dade and Adam. Hey. Hi. Who's also not Foxtrot. I'm not Foxtrot. Foxtrot is me though. It, it, it's a long story, but Foxtrot, stop being Dade. I'm kind of shaking right now. 
that ditch back there, I am lovingly calling a van killer because I did not see it going into it. I should have walked it. There was just so much potential for getting stuck if the line wasn't just perfect. And I walked it this time on the way back and you think that's bad rattling around. I mean, the, the, the van was really swaying. And so I've got this apprehension on the way back thinking to myself of all of the ways it can go wrong, all of the potential for disaster, you know, and I'm like sizing it up in my head, all the recovery and stuff. And so to a certain extent, there's an element of that. It's like, okay, you know, be prudent, be wise, be prepared, all that jazz. Yes. However, there's another element to it where my imagination of all of those bad scenarios where everything goes terribly wrong, my, my body doesn't actually know the difference between what I'm imagining going wrong and it actually going wrong. So my heart is racing and my hands are shaking as if, as if something terrible had actually happened and the, the, the truth of the matter is nothing bad actually happened. <sighs> so here we are and that's what I'm, that's, that's another, another elephant as you, as, as it were. Okay. I need to find a place for tonight. Let's check it out. Step one is to walk the land. This is a far cry from where we just were with all these crazy outcroppings and that's a lot of gnats. All right. Gnat territory. Otherwise, it's something. It's got a bit of a view. Can't really discount that. You got your uh, traces. Uh, you see that all over BLM land. It's just the way it is. But this is a clear sign that this is a camp spot. And walking the land, it's hard pack, it's flat. Did I mention the view? Yeah, that's not gonna get old. All right. Camp it is. Oh, more gnats. There's probably a trick to this gnat situation, but I don't know it yet. Wow. Okay. And this is where I take the first bite of the elephant. For me, it's sitting with this. In my new home, just being. Not, a, not running from anything, not avoiding anything. This is not a go, go, go trip. This isn't a trip, it's weird. It's hack across America and yet it's just like a persistent chapter and that's intentional. I've done a lot of these trips with Glitch, with myself and always had these you know destinations and goals and we're gonna get to that because th there is a greater mission here but before I introduce that element of this chapter I really gotta make peace with me and the peanut the peanuts the van by the way and if my elephant right now is to sit with it and become at peace with the peanut and what this whole thing means then one way that I can achieve that is to just get out there. And boy, have I picked a place in the Eastern Sierras to get out there. No service. So for as much as I've modded my antennas and everything in the van for connectivity, I'm going to take a baby step and just spend a weekend offline. I've got facilities in here for 5G and for 4G, and yet I'm purposefully going to 0G. We're we're going OG is what we're doing. I honestly can't remember the last time I disconnected. It was probably when I had a 56K modem. Trumpet windsock, that's your friend. But when's the last time you just disconnected? So I'm just gonna disconnect. To do that, one tiny baby step, that first scoop and eating that elephant is literally just driving to a place where there's no service. And that just means getting in the truck, getting in the car, getting in the van. That's easy. I get in the van every day. No big deal. 
and then start the engine. Boom! I'm winning at this. I'm so good at this already. I haven't even gotten there and I'm so killing it. I've started the engine. All right, plug in some GPS. That place looks great. Let's go. And so now I'm just following the blue line. So much of life is following the blue line. I believe this over here is where they shot uh, that scene in Star Trek Generations with uh, Kirk and Picard. That was a good one. So it's just breaking something big down into baby steps, and here's the thing. Whether it's, you know, getting fit, well, getting fit sounds difficult, but putting on your gym shoes is something achievable and something you can do right now. So put on your gym shoes, and hey, you got your shoes on, you might as well walk down to the gym and psh, you're there already, hey. Would it really kill you if you did some push-ups or something? And so you start, and next thing you know, you're in the zone. You're doing it, and, and you do that enough, and suddenly, something that you do becomes something that you are. And so I want to become one with the peanut and this lifestyle and this adventure. And it's been all of this energy getting to this point. And now I just want to kick it over the, you know, just like really kick it into gear. But just spending a nice little weekend completely disconnected from the internet. So the baby step is just to drive there. And I can drive all day long. Woo! <laughs> Remind me to tell you a story one time about, about dunes outside a Joshua tree with glitch. And uh, catch an air. Trust me, you don't want to catch air in one of these. Yes. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of lights when you get to ISO 5000. <laughs> All right, Hannah, be I insightful. Have, I don't have any insight. I have no insight into anything. Okay, the but this is the eye. This is where this there's is the there is the sight for in. Oh, wow. Then I guess my best advice is just to enjoy the view. All right, enjoy the view. I'm hankering for a little change of scenery, which is why we're on a very special pen test USB drop mission. That's right. It's time for the USB rubber ducky in Death Valley. Thanks for supporting Hack5. Find all our shows, community, and pen test products at hack5.org.